Okay, so welcome to Let's Play Escape from Castle Nunway. Nunway, sorry. Otherwise known as Project P. The P, of course, is for philosophy. This is a Let's Play of an RPG Maker 2000, yes, 2000, 19 years ago, game that I, the mysterious Let's Player, once made for a high school philosophy class, of which I was part, not teaching as it happened, back in 2006. Yada yada yada. So basically it's a game about philosophy in 2D. Um, well you'll see, you'll see. So who is this video for? Well this video is for people who are floating around on the internet and have stumbled upon it and would like to watch a let's play of a old amateur RPG about philosophy, 2D. It's also for those studying philosophy or those interested in philosophy who want to learn a little bit more about it. I am, at the, this current moment in time, a high school philosophy teacher myself. The pupil has become the master, you might say. And I am going to be talking various nonsense and hopefully some sense about philosophy as we go through. There's a small chance it could also be useful for anyone sitting the UK AQA Philosophy A-Level exam, uh, which I was doing when I made this once upon a time. So I might say some things which are relevant for that, so hey, that could be an excuse to watch YouTube instead of doing your homework. No, pretend, pretend I didn't say that. Pretend I didn't say that. Right, let's, let's just get on with this, okay. Oh, by the way, one more thing, sorry, before I jump on. So, um... This game features lots of my favourite songs, or at least my favourite songs when I when I made it at the age of 17, 18. Um, however, for the internet version which I'm playing, which is also the safe version with swear words edited out, um, to get it online I had to I had to cut out all the original MP3 music and find MIDI's, so downgraded musical versions of all of the songs. So in most of them are, are the songs but in MIDI form where I could find them and otherwise they're MIDI replacements. So this actually is uh, Dead Souls by Joy Division, my favourite band of all time. Bonus points if you knew that, but in MIDI form of course. Okay that was a way too long introduction as is typical of me. Let's jump in. There are options on go, that would say low if there are any save files and no. So I'm going to go with go, here we go. So attention, all characters in this game are the original creation of the author. Any resemblance may, they may bear to real life people is pretty cool, something like that. I stole that from South Park on TV. And this song, bonus points if you recognise, it's Optical One by Interpol. Welcome to Escape from Castle Mundi, a cool game where you walk around and fight and other stuff like that. It is essential that you play this game with sound. Oh yeah, I've already told you this, sorry. Uh, they incorporate some of the maker's favourite songs in MIDI form. Before you start, you must answer some preliminary questions, I assume, yes, which will determine how you play. Just answer truthfully, as it will make the game more fun for you to play. Playing as Desmond, which for some reason was my main for day part, will give you a slightly easier ride, so if you want the game to be slightly easier first time around, make sure that you choose a priori, which means from before, as your preferred type of model. Controls are the arrow keys, movement and navigating menus, Z for confirm slash action, and X for capture or call menu. You don't need to do that, you're not playing it, I'm playing it. If you have any problems, please refer in the read to the readme part of the main folder. You can save at any time outside of Battle Barracks, but you can aim you can choose and save. Well, duh, it is, easy, it is wise to do so regularly. Please note that due to time constraints, only a very select group of characters feature in this game, and that these characters are only characters based on very shallow and cursory knowledge that's how my philosophy teacher used to refer to us in our knowledge and in one case a bizarre random fact from the Encyclopedia Britannica yes which is that Descartes had a fetish for cross-eyed women might as well give it away now sorry for you. right which do you prefer a posteriori or a posteriori or knowledge as you know philosophers a posteriori is knowledge from experience a posteriori is knowledge from before experience so yeah, after experience, before experience, this is the um, a posteriori is the 
knowledge that comes from the senses, the experiential world, from having sense experiences. A priori, for those who, who believe in it, which actually is most philosophers for the most of the survey, uh, knowledge such as knowledge of math, knowledge of what is true by definition, knowledge of log not logic, you don't need to experience these things in the world to know that they are true. So the first bit of the written material is proven. Let's go ever right to the event that's this day part, actually read a day part, you know, so the humor of the seventeen year old. Do you believe in God? I'm gonna go with yes because as it happens I do. I'm a Christian, as I like to tell my students. Was Achilles truly the greatest Greek hero in existence? Well this is our first in joke, unfortunately. Oh no, my daughter's waking up, which will interrupt this lesson. I've actually gone back to the okay. I'm doing this uh, while I'm on duty with my daughter. They interrupt me um, Let's say, let's say no, because that would just irritate my friend Julian, who I made this uh, with once upon a time. Was Wagner a genius? The famous German composer, well, he definitely needed to be a genius. Language is the key. Not to everything. Do you like Nirvana? Mr. Unwin, yeah, so Nunwi is a bad anagram for Unwin. This was originally made by my philosophy teacher. The great Mr. Unwin. Uh, he wants option two for more dial. Interesting dial. Let's do that. Is Colin Shields cool? Another in joke. Son of Professor uh, Christopher Shields. One at one time Oxford University might still be there. Uh, one of my friends from school days. So it's kind of mean to say anything, but it's due to the stupid to be one of the other words. Infinity would be a fine actor, but that's just stupid thing to say. This music is good. Yes. At last. Fade to black. Say the stage directions. Once upon a time, there was a very clever fellow with an inconsequential name. He was quite interested in doing philosophy at university, so that is exactly what he did. After that, he moved somewhere else and took up teaching in his beloved subject. One day, his girlfriend dumped him. In his depression, he turned to the occult and became a masterful conjurer. Ha 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 ha! His evil powers grew so great that he was unsurpassed in this field. Remembering his first love though, he created himself a castle in another dimension and magically summoned the most influential philosophers of all time to it in order to carry out his sick experiment. Now that's not talking about me, because I was a student when I made this. I was talking about my philosophy teacher having a dig at him. None of it happened there. So, welcome to Escape from Castle Nunley. Once again, this is like the longest introduction ever. Uh, bonus points if you recognise this is Orinoco Flow by Enya. Why not? Why not? Just adjust the mic again, sorry about that. One more time. Whoa, beaming in. Okay, here we are. Desmond Descartes. Where am I? I'm not even going to try and attempt a French accent. Where am I? I, I did it. I, I attempted it once. How did I get here? No, fool! That's the wrong way! What? what? Where did that voice come from? You gained control of Desmond. Good, it hasn't bugged. It's so embarrassing when I do this with students and it bugs at the first point of movement and then you have to redo the whole thing. Okay, so I'm walking around in this place. Uh, not a whole lot happening. Each tree is exactly the same. Can't go up here. That's a great game design, isn't it? Uh, what does this say? Castle Nunwi. One philosophy road, another dimension. AD1, 4Y2. Why that postcode? Nobody knows. Uh, does the statue do anything? Oh, this one's called Truth. That's pretentious. Secret code? What? Okay. I actually do know the secret code, but if you want to do this cheat code, then you need to play the game for yourself. Or watch the LP to the end, I guess, and find the cheat code out for yourself. So you can do that. Whoops, you can do that. So let's do that. And um, we can do it. Incorrect. The skeleton. How creepy is that on this? You found the contradiction fallacy. Infective versus extreme skeleton. Nice. That one's really useful. Let's go up here. I can get to the other screen. Also, great game design. Okay, let's go up here. 
Ooh, ugly old man said, Hey you! Who are you? Who am I? Why, I am the great Socrates! Hmm, Socrates, hey? Wait a minute, I know you. Well, that's a very Greek guy who flew around asking stupid questions. I'm going to kill that playwright, says Socrates. That's a classic in joke. What's the name of the playwright? Aristophanes. Famous in parody of Socrates. Hold on, aren't you supposed to be, well, uh, dead? How would you define dead? Well, like, no, wait, I see what you're trying to do here. I'm not getting into one of those discussions. Your mate Plato will write a book that make you look like an utter moron. Okay, let's do a bit of philosophical uh, explanation now. So, we're starting as Descartes, playing as Descartes, who's the father of modern philosophy, kicking it off in about the 16th century. But really, philosophy has its roots in Greece, uh, with the Greeks. You can tell that because it's a Greek word, philosophy, philosophy, love and wisdom. Originally came from Greek learning, Greek discussion about the deep questions of life and the finer things, although it encompasses all sorts of disciplines to begin with. And there were philosophers before Socrates, for sure, like the Sophists, Stalin, and the like, various other people. But, but they're called the pre Socratics because Socrates is the most important early ancient philosopher. Uh, and just as Descartes picked off modern philosophy, Socrates could be said to, to really um, epitomise and um, um, kickstart the ancient Greek philosophy. He was the most important figure, easily. Except that is to say, along with Plato, because actually Socrates didn't write anything, he just talked to people. Uh, so we don't know as much as we could about the historical Socrates. We know what Plato gave us of him. And Plato wrote up some of Socrates, his teachers' discussions um, in, in philosophical dialogues, which are the kind of starting foundational point in, in, philosoph in serious philosophical study, such as, you know, Euthyphro, um, Mino, um, Vitetus, others, there are others. So what you have here in 2D form is two of the utter giants of the history of philosophy facing off against one another. Actually, they're not going to battle, and I know their conversation is a bit trite, but hey, I was 17, I'll, I'll probably say that a lot during this Let's Play. Let's carry on. Very well, says Socrates. Do you really want me to tell you why I, why we are here? Sock it to me. Don't you ever, ever make that joke again. Sorry, never look. Don't worry, nobody does wrong on purpose. You're just ignorant. Now, oh, that, that's something Socrates taught you. Never do wrong, knowing that if you knew it was wrong, you wouldn't do it. So, everyone does wrong by accident. It's not actually possible. Um, in a way where you're truly moral, morally responsible. That's the kind of weird, irritating thing he said. Now, says Socrates, if you want to know why you are here, you must first know where here is. You are in fact, dear Desmond, in another dimension that exists outside of conventional time and space. How is that possible? How did I get here? You're asking a lot of questions. I like that. Would you care to answer them? Well, if you must know, an evil conjurer has summoned your consciousness in the form of a self-projected psychic metaphor in his evil lair in another dimension, where he will battle you against other philosophers in order to see who is the greatest among you. Dramatic pause. I know you're a great philosopher, everything, Rocky, but you're taking the mix. I assure you, no Michael is being extracted from anywhere. What proof? Yes, maybe. Well, first of all, look around you. Look around you. Just look around you. That's a in joke and reference to a an old BBC comedy series called Look Around You, which was a parody science documentary that our chemistry, my A-level chemistry teacher, used to let us watch at the end of term. Very niche, very niche. Well, what do you see having looked around you? I see your regard substances extended in space. Yes, yes, but look a little more closely, Descartes. Do you notice something strange? Not really. Well, firstly, all the trees are exactly the same, as are the little groups of flowers. Then there's the water. What's about it? It's perfectly uniform! It's pixelated, for goodness sake, retard. So what? What do you mean, so what? 
first dart, it proved that this place is a shoddy built to turn it their mention, quickly constructed by an evil conjurer who couldn't be bothered to make the trees look different. This is a great dialogue. You should be carried from this beginning of the I'm getting a clear and distinct idea. Ooh, Descartes reference. Yes, you need a clear and distinct idea. That you are a bit loopy, Sophie. Now, I may be saying Sophie earlier, but actually, that's the first time I've said it. Do you want more proof? Well, if you think about it, we can't be anything other than psychic projections as we're managing to talk to each other. Well, I don't know about you, Socky, but I don't usually have difficulty talking to people. Oh, I thought he was going to get irritated that he was being called Socky. Never mind. Even when you're talking in English to an ancient Greek? Pantaloons, says Descartes. You're right. I've been talking in English all this time. Mad. I must be in another dimension. There you go. How do I get out of here? Descartes wants to know. Unfortunately for you, the only way to get out of here is to go into that castle behind me. If you beat all the other philosophers in there, only then will the evil conjurer grant you passage out of here. How terribly cliché, said the French word. Hey, the game designer, I mean evil sorcerer, needs some reason to make you take on everyone in the castle. What about you, Socky? What are you going to do? Uh, I have to go somewhere else. Ha ha ha! Hey, you didn't disappear, you're just hiding behind this tree. Go away! Well, I guess after exploring the main menu for a bit, what we've got that part of the game very uh what was best to for the very long tedious battles. Uh weapon foil, full sword, ah yeah, defense chain mail, country France, nice, that's a lot of it. Speciality, having a sword, original, actually doesn't have any stuff. Good, that's pretty safe. Um, let's get back in. Yeah. Are you ready? Are you ready? Okay. It's a It's a single corridor so far. Ah, uh, who's this? Oh, yes, I don't know who this is. We'll see. Which philosopher are you then? I am no philosopher. I am the evil demon of hyperbolic doubt, which is why my voice is shifting to become demonic. <laughs> You must go. You must got. You must go through me to get into the castle. Ah, my arch nemesis! I have defeated you before and can do so again. Eat Cogito, malicious beast! Evil demon told his idea. Okay, so more teaching. Descartes, what he in Bach, one of the principal projects in the fifth century, most famous in the book The Meditation. What he tries to do is to doubt. Oh, shouldn't have had all that uh, guacamolean tortilla chips. He tries to doubt everything he could possibly doubt in order to work out what is certain. And um, what's, the, what's the point? Well, he's just trying to investigate the contents of his, of his mind, of his psyche, with serious philosophical scrutiny, using the philosophical method. Well, one way of seeing it is that he's trying it. And, He's trying to work out what can he actually know for sure and things that he thinks he knows. So he systematically goes about doubting everything that he can. There are three ways of doubt. He's starting off with um, doubting his senses, whether they deceive him, then moving on to doubting um, whether he's actually awake or not. So sometimes he's dreaming and it seems like he's awake, but he's not. So maybe the external world is in there. And then doubting even beyond that, the truth of mathematics, which seems to be the same in dreams. And um, other truths like all time is getting upset, and so popular, and it's super. La 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 la. Um, and uh, yeah, where was I? Where's the doubt two? Where's the doubt three? That's right. Even if there are truths, the truth of the matter. It gets all the way down and discovers in the face of. Well, he discovers that he could be being deceived by an evil demon, that's actually still wave 3, who is here, the, the demon of, of hyperbolic doubt. And he, uh, well, he's done. That's not a good indication. He, um, he hypothesizes that he could be being deceived by actually everything in his mind by this evil genius or this evil demon in some translation, which leaves him with nothing, or does it, except he 
Descartes physically decides that the one thing that he could not doubt, that he cannot doubt, even as an evil demon, he is controlling his mind and feeding him this information. A bit like being in the Matrix, or a bit like being a brain in a vat, um, having electrodes pumped into your brain so that you can be fed this information. This um, it, incorrect sense of sir, or uh, experiences that don't relate to, to an external world. Even if that's happening, what can he not doubt? One thing, that he is, he exists. I am I in which he And the discourse of the method gets another way famously in that piece of this. I think therefore I am a cogito ergo sum. And that is his foundational starting point for his philosophy that he cannot doubt. Unfortunately it's already been used up by the autopilot, but you hopefully saw earlier that the cogito, the special move they cast with powerful weapon, does huge damage. That's the foundation from which he then tries to build up his philosophical project and tries to uh, work out other things he can know based on that initial sure start. Okay, that's, that's, that's Cartesian skepticism and uh, how he starts to discuss it. He's trying to destroy this when his little while he's back in the world. Unfortunately, way too long. doing modern philosophy at least. You're going to start with Descartes, you're going to start with hyperbolic, hyperbolic doubt. And if you're trying to construct a philosophical system, since Descartes, many people would say you're going to need to deal with the problem about skepticism about the external world. Is there really an external world? But there is, because we've defeated our opponent's arguments. We found 10 quid and a caffeine pill because demons need caffeine. Ah, you have defeated hyperbolic doubt somehow. You may now enter the castle proper. I could have just walked around you, but hey, what else do you So, if you can establish that there is actually an external world, then you'll be allowed into the castle of philosophy. That's the metaphor that is going on here. Wow, I'm so confirmed. Uh, who's this? Hello there, do I have to defeat you too? No. Do I look like a philosopher to you? Well, you kind of do, you're in a suit of time. Uh, yes. Don't be foolish. I'm a chicken! What? Uh, no, I think you're a person. A very tall, very strange, and very stupid person. I think you're still a person. Nonsense! What makes you think I'm not a chicken? Sorry, not all of these people should have posh British accents. That's just because it's my accent and the one I revert to most naturally. And I've got a cold, so I'll do my best. Nonsense! What makes you think I'm not a chicken? Well, first of all, chickens go cluck or quack, quack, not squawk or squawk. Then there's the whole uh, suit and tie thing. Finally, you're talking to me. That's all very well, but it doesn't use the fact that I'm a chicken. Why not? Because I have a clear and distinct perception that I'm a chicken. Okay, teaching point. This is uh, taking a dig at Descartes' clear and distinct ideas, which you've already seen earlier in the battle. Descartes trying to build up from his foundational starting point of being unable to doubt that he is and he is this because he would be even feeding his lies by resorting to what he calls clear and distinct ideas. Famously, the clear and distinct idea in his head, other than that he exists, that clear and distinct for sure, is that he has an idea of God in his mind. And Descartes thinks that he can use this idea as sort of his second step to then go on to prove the other a priori things that he thought he knew before, their validity, Sound, I suppose, and also to re-establish his belief in the, the reality of the external world. And this is known as a Cartesian circle. He's been, been criticised famously in philosophy for this um, by what well, people say that he effectively that he uses his idea of God in his mind to validate his belief in the external world. However, you know, that's what the circle talk. This is a very embarrassing moment, but it is it is quite late in the evening. Um, I'm sorry, what it is is that he uses his idea of God to validate his the legitimacy of his clear and distinct idea, if that's it. But his idea of God is itself a clear and distinct idea. So there's a certain uh, 
the tendency there. It's, it's a question begging. He's using God to validate clear and simple ideas, but clear and simple ideas to validate God. That's the one, that's the monkey. Gosh, it's been a long day of teaching. And so I had a temporary brain fart on that. I apologise, if you watch this far, you really don't care too much about that. You're kind of a aren't you? So, you've been having money back for that one. But actually, you're not paying me. So, let's carry on. How dare you blaspheme against my clear and distinct ideas? You are clearly mistaken, sir! I'm not a sir, I'm a chicken. Okay. And my name is Bob. Well, Bob, I challenge you to single combat. Nothing doing, I'm only a chicken. Why don't we team up instead? I suppose it could have hurt. Brilliant! Bring me some chicken feed and I'll join you. I know there's some hidden in this room somewhere. What? Why would there be? Hey, the you often need to stop me to make this game last longer than 15 minutes? Pardon me? Did you just violate the suspension of disbelief? Suspension of disbelief? Come on! My name's Bob the Chicken, for goodness sake. There's no disbelief here. You know that this is a all of deceit. I've broken the portal all so many times better. Come back when you found my feet. Oh, and don't leave this part of the castle. I have a feeling you've lost this before. That'd be quite difficult to tackle alone. Okay. That's a Oh, we found a clean sword, that's what these books say. Nothing. I should really make them so you interact with books. Look out for that in version 2, which will probably never appear. They would have had cool titles like Beyond Good and Evil and Thus Spoke Down Future. Oh, he's switched. He's a big girl in the room. He found a chicken. Oh, that's good. Oh, yeah, why is this random here after? A fairly lucid, sensible introduction with uh, the evil demon of hyperbolic doubt. That's kind of related to philosophy. This unfortunately was just a joke. There was a kid in my class who said if Descartes had a current perceived idea that he was a chicken, or someone called Bob had that as a full experiment, would that make him a chicken? That's kind of based on a fundamental misunderstanding of what Descartes saying, even if you do accept the Cartesian circle style criticism. However, I threw him in anyway. So, here's Bob the chicken. Wow, you got my feet like I'll join you now. Bob came to see you and you can touch us. Congratulations. So I think you can go to the left or right. I think it makes sense to go left. Uh my voice is getting out, so I'm gonna take a break. Oh, let's just read this first. Okay, so listen up, my name is Captain Kirk, but you can call me Johannes de Silentio or Judge Wilhelm or A. Or whatever crazy pretentious pseudonym I feel like using today. This is Kierkegaard. This room, like all good things, is a bit of a paradox. Basically, if you want to argue with me, then you have to pass the test first. It will assess both your memory and your understanding of God, and of me. Seeing as I'm told whether rightly or wrongly that you believe in God, ah yes, we said yes, didn't we? You're going to have to do pretty well if you want to take me on. Right, now do you see those five people over there? Uh, yes. Go and talk to them. Get to know them. Then come and talk to me. I will ask you some questions about them. If you get them right and then get my questions about God right, then you can go toe to toe with me. Alright? Alright. Okay, I think I'm going to save right now because I need to take a break. Might be five minutes, might be a few weeks. And come back to recording this later because my voice is getting on. But I hope you enjoyed part one. Escape from Castle Then We. Let's play Escape from Castle Then We, episode one. Like and subscribe or whatever you said to say. Uh, comment. Sick. Drop me some comments if you'd like. Correct me about Cart Cartesian circles because it really is very late. And um, yeah, ciao for now.